Good morning. Today is the 17th day of 2nd Adar, the 27th of March. We're going to be looking at a verse from the fourth reading of Parsha Tzav. And the verse we're going to be looking at is in Leviticus 8, chapter 8, verse 3. And basically, in, in the fourth reading, we're going, we're going to be reading about the installation rites for Aaron and his, uh, and his sons, his four sons. So I'll just start from 8.1. And it says like this, on the 23rd of Adar, 24.49, um, God spoke to Moses, saying, Take Aaron together with his sons, the priestly garments, the anointing oil. So I if you notice the dates, the 23rd of Adar, we've actually gone backwards. Um, we're restarting the seven days of the installation rites. So there was seven days from the 23rd of Adar all the way to the 1st of Nisan. The last day of Adar, the 29th, was the seventh day. So we have 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. That's seven days of installation rites. And on each day, Moses would take the tabernacle apart and put it back together again. Exactly how this was done and how long it took is not the point now. And then on the first of Nisan, that's called the eighth day. And that'll be the beginning of next week's Parsha. Next week's Parsha is called Shmini. Shmini means the eighth because it was on the eighth day. The eighth day is the first day of Nisan. And it's actually not every year, but many of the years we read uh, Shmini during the, well, the first day of Nisan um, is, is very close to when we read the Parsha called Shmini, which is about the first day of Nisan. So anyway, we're going backwards now just to see a few other things that happened. And, and it says in verse 2, in chapter uh, 8, verse 2, Take Aaron together with the sons, the priestly garments, the anointing oil, the sin offering bowl, the two rams, and the basket of unleavened bread. Now the verse that we're going to look at, verse 3, And assemble the entire community at the entrance to the tent of meeting. And this is a very interesting verse. How can you assemble the entire community at the entrance to the tent of meeting? Rashi, he's a basic medieval commentary. He's considered to be the redactor, if one wants, of all the rabbinical knowledge into a commentary on the Torah. That's why we consider him to be so basic. He writes that this, uh, to assemble the entire community into the entrance of the tent of meeting. So if you want to say literally at the entrance to the tent of meeting, that would really be impossible. But let's assume that the entrance to the tent of meeting is referring to the tabernacle courtyard. How big was this courtyard? Well, the area of the whole tabernacle courtyard was 50 by 100 cubits. Each cubit is about 50 centimeters, or 1.66 feet, for those of you in America. And so, if you had 600,000 men that would need to stand in this type of area, 50 by 100 cubits, you'd need about 120 people standing on every square cubit. So, on every square, on, on every two and three quarters of a square foot. Now, you can't do that. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. So what exactly is going on here? What is, what, is Moses, what is God telling Moses? So Rashi says this is, you, you can't understand this verse um, as some kind of figure of speech. There is something else that's going on here, and we have to look at it in a more literal sense, that the entire community assembled within the courtyard. And so Rashi says that this is one of the examples in which the lesser contained the greater. That something small can contain something great. Now this is a very important concept in, in Jewish uh, thought because the whole concept of the tabernacle is something small that contains something great. Because we have a limited-sized building 
Uh, this one was very small. And it's supposed to contain God. <laughs> Obviously, it doesn't contain God in the sense that God fits in it because God is not something physical. But the whole notion that we're putting the infinite into the finite is there to bend our understanding of differences between the finite and the infinite and also to to reestablish and to rethink what it means to actually have space to have extension within space what does it mean that we are corporeal bodies what exactly is going on here so without getting into the side of how God does this let's talk a little bit about what does this mean and the relationship between people and we identify this statement the lesser that contains the greater with the core of the mystery of what we call Avat Israel, the love of Israel it says when Jews love each one another they are capable of congregating in a very small space the Talmud relates a similar idea regarding a man and a woman who truly love one another and can therefore, the Talmud says, sleep on a bed the width of the blade of a sword. If two people really love each other, they can do that. This is from Sanhedrin, Folio 7, side A. There was a certain man who was saying about his marriage as he walked, when our love was strong, we could have slept on a bed that was the width of a sword. Now that our love is not so strong, a bed of 60 cubits is not sufficient for us. And this is a very important statement because what he's saying is that really how much space you have in the world, how much you feel that you have your place, you have your space, is not dependent on how much space you have. It really depends on what kind of relationship you have with the people around you. If the relationship is not one of love, then it doesn't matter if you have 60 cubits. You still won't be able to occupy the same space together. Now, this idea is brought in the Shulchan Aruch from the Code of Law from Alter Rebbe, the founder of Chabad. He has a very interesting law that he says that if a, few, if a number of people are using the same prayer shawl, the same talis, one of them can say the blessing for all of them. And there was a question that was asked, what do you mean one of them can say the blessing for the How can two people use the same prayer shawl? How can two people get under the same prayer shawl? It's, not, it's, it's maybe big enough for one person. Now you're going to put five people, six people, ten people. How, how exactly is that going to work? And so I don't remember which one of the Rebbeim said this, but he said it all depends. If every one of the ten people under the prayer shawl is trying to pull the other nine in, then there's enough room for all of them. But if each one of them is trying to grab as much of the prayer shawl as they can to cover themselves, then the prayer shawl is not even big enough for one person. This question of being able to share depends in the end on love. And as much as maybe we don't feel it right now, but it's slowly happening, the earth is a finite space. Space itself is finite. At some point, one point or another, whether it's within your home or it's within uh, the territories between countries or even interplanetary space, whatever it is, at some point you will run up against the limits of space. And so there has to be love, there has to be affection in order for the many to occupy the finite. And so we have that this entire verse, actually, well, almost the entire verse, the words, the entire community, assemble them at the entrance to the tent of meeting, or in Hebrew, kol kel el petach o'el moed, which is almost the entire verse. It's missing uh, the first vav, the first vav, just one letter. Uh, sorry, ve'et, the first word, ve'et. just starts from the second word of the of verse. It itself has the same value as the lesser that contains the greater. Well, what's really amazing is that both these statements, both the seven words 
from the, the verse has eight. So the last seven words, discounting the first word, and this statement, the lesser that contains the greater, each one of them, each one of these phrases, is exactly equal to what we just said, love of Israel, avat Yisrael. They have the same value. So now, we can look at Rabbi Akiva's well-known words, love your fellow as you love yourself. This is a great principle of Torah, said Rabbi Akiva. And see that they too demonstrate the principle of the small that accommodates the larger. How is this? Because it's a very short commandment. Ve'ahavta l'reacha kamocha. You shall love your fellow as you love yourself. In Hebrew, it's exactly 13 letters. Three words, 13 letters. And this short commandment, says Rabbi Akiva, contains a great principle, meaning it's like the entire Torah condensed into three words. Love your fellow as you love yourself. This is an incredible uh, uh, understanding that without respect and love between people, it doesn't matter how big the world is, there is never going to be enough space. And when there's respect and love between people, and they care for one another, it's possible to make the world even much smaller. And that's the main thing we need to learn from this, that we can't make do with just respect. There has to be love. When there's love, then there's an ability to not just respect the other and, and build walls. Sometimes respect is gained by making walls, but the the... The, the goal has to be one of love. The goal has to be of everyone caring and wanting the other to succeed, the other to, uh, uh, to have their space. And this is probably the highest level of um, consciousness that a human being can reach. And the reason that God did this at the initiation rites of the tabernacle was to explain that the love of God and the love of Israel are really connected to one another. You can't say that you love God if you don't love Israel. And by Israel, again, I don't mean just if, if you're Jewish or not. I mean very simply that if you don't love your fellow man, because there it says, there's a lot of discussion about this. It doesn't say you need to love your fellow Jew. It says, Love your fellow man. Because this is the universal lesson for everyone. And it's the general principle of the entire Torah. Later, Hillel the Elder, who was a precursor to Rabbi Akiva, he came and said that this is the principle upon which the entire Torah stands. There was a convert that came to him and said to him, Teach me the entire Torah when I, while I'm standing on one foot. And so he told them the translation of this verse into Aramaic, that was the language it was, they were talking at the time. And he said, Kol alecha, lo Everything that is hateful to you, do not do to others. Which is the flip side of love every person as you love yourself. Love your fellow as you love yourself. But either the case, this is considered to be the highest spiritual level. And you can think about it again, and, and make it come home by understanding that this is the only way you can really fit everyone into a small space. It's the only way in which God, who is infinite, can fit into the heart. If you don't have the ability to do this in the corporeal world, in the physical world, where bodies have extension, then you also don't have the ability to do this when it comes to inviting the infinite, God, into your own heart. Thanks for joining. Hope to see you tomorrow.